Hi guys, my name is Bas and welcome to episode number 25 of my RStudio tutorials here on YouTube. Today we're going to have a final look for now at uh, multiple linear regression. And we have already discussed in the previous episodes how to work with confounders, mediators and moderators. But for now I want to make one final episode on the difference between them because you need to know the difference uh, before you start working with SPSS. So this is more of an explanation video. Uh, yeah, for your own liking. So if this video is helpful to you in any way, shape or form, then please leave a like on this video and uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel because I want to make this channel grow as much as possible. So every like and sub will be appreciated. And if you have any comments on this matter, then please uh, ask it in the comment section down below. Okay, so we're going to look at a couple of models today. And the first model is going to be, uh, and it's actually in a newspaper I saw last year. And it said that people who own a horse have a higher life expectancy, so grow older. And that's actually not really true. Well, it is true, but it's not a direct, of a really strong direct relationship. Because if you buy a horse, it's not like if you buy a horse that your the uh, amount of year, uh, uh, the amount of years you grow older definitely increases. Now it's because of another variable which wasn't mentioned, uh, and it's called income. And because, uh, and then uh, once you know what the third variable is, you're going to take a look at whether it's a confounder or a mediator. And we're going to do that by drawing lines. So uh, by drawing arrows, because we know that owning a horse has a, uh, has a positive effect on life expectancy. But we're going to take a look at income uh, and whether owning a horse leads to a higher income or whether having a higher income leads to owning a horse. And it's of course the second, the higher your income, the easier it is for you to buy a horse. So richer people more often own a horse than poor people because it's quite expensive to own a horse. So the first arrow is like this. The second arrow is between income and life expectancy. And if your income increases, then, you're, then, you're, uh, then you can afford a higher level of healthcare and therefore your life expectancy increases and not the other way around. It's not that if you grow older that your income of your past uh, job increases. So the arrow is like this and this completes the model. And now we can see and conclude from the arrows that income is a confounder in this case. And a confounder is a disturbance because you want to take a look at the true relationship between owning a horse and life expectancy. And income has an influence on both, but you want to know the true relationship. So by adding income into your SPSS regression model, you, uh, neutralize the, you ne neutralize these effects and the true effect of owning a horse on life expectancy then remains. So you want to neutralize income uh, and it's sort of a, yeah, like a bad factor. Another model is between the IQ of the parents and the income of children. If the IQ of your parents is higher, then the approximately your income as a child will be higher. And this might be the case, but the third variable, which is very important, is the IQ of children. And we're once again gonna draw, uh, we're once again gonna draw arrows. So either uh, if the parents have a higher IQ, then the children will have a higher IQ. Or if the children's IQ is higher than the parents' IQ is higher. Well, it's of course a one-way relationship from parents to children because it's genetical. And if your parents studied at university, then indeed the chance is higher that children will study at university as well. And if we then look at the income, the relationship between IQ and income for children is of course from IQ to income. If your IQ is higher, then the chances of you getting a higher income are, uh, are bigger. So we have drawn the arrows like this, and therefore we can conclude that in this case, the children's IQ is a mediating factor. So it is an explanation where confounder is a disturbance and something you want to get rid of. The children's IQ is more, uh, is more of an explanation of the main effect. And you can split up the main effect into a direct effect and an indirect effect by adding the uh, mediator into your regression model. And uh, as uh, the confounders are rather a disturbance uh, and you don't actually like them because they ruin your, uh, they ruin your main effect, 
uh, that's not the case for mediators. You actually take them, uh, they, you actually make them um, a part of your hypotheses. For example, uh, my hypothesis is that uh, if the IQ of parents increases, then your children's income increases. And this is done uh, via uh, the children's IQ. So you, it's actually a part of your research. So what's important when you're working with co-founders uh, co or mediators is that you take a good look at where in your R, uh, in your R coefficients table, whether it is a confounder or a mediator. Because if you take a look at this coefficients table, it was the, from the data set of the confounder episodes. You can see the intercept and then the slope of the independence variable, which is ice cream. And then the intercept of, in this case, the confounder, which was 0.95, which was very high. But if it would be a mediator, then it would look exactly the same. R does not know whether you're working with a mediator or a confounder. They will give the same results in your output, so in your uh, console screen. You will always get this uh, you will always get this coefficients table, no matter if it's a confounder or a mediator. So it's up to you to determine whether this slope is a confounder or a mediator. That's up to you. And once you've done that, then you can interpret the right results. Okay, and then the third and final model we're going to take a look at today is the hours studied and the test result for, for, an, for an statistics exam. And it's again a positive relationship. So uh, if you study one extra hour, your test result will increase with uh, 0.2, for example. But it might be the case that this effect of 0.2 is different for different age groups. Maybe a freshman, so someone who's 18 years old, if he or she studies an extra hour, then his or her test result will increase with 0.3. And maybe if someone uh, who is 30, so who is already working and doing a part-time study, studies an extra hour, then the effect will only be 0.1. And it has an average effect of 0.2. Saying that the main effect between the independence variable and the dependence variable differs per groups is called moderating. And H, in this case, is the moderator. So H has an effect on the main effect. Meaning that the main relationship differs per the moderating groups, which is most of the time age or gender. Um, and you can't really determine this uh, via uh, arrows. You, I mean, if you're doubting whether it's a confounder or a uh, mediator, you can draw the arrows and find out for yourself. Well, if it's a moderator, you should know beforehand. It's really a big part uh, of your thesis. So you should determine that beforehand. So. That's a brief, brief summary of what we've discussed so far in the past six episodes. Um, I hope this was helpful for you that uh, by following the past seven, eight, maybe even eight, that by following the past eight uh, episodes, you now understand multiple linear regression. If that was the case, then please leave a like. Uh, I'll be back with more, way more. We're going to start with ANOVAS uh, in the past, in the next weeks. So uh, thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you guys for the next episodes. Ciao.